Welcome to the Prototype Series, a group of videos in which we explore creating small projects combining different Unity features. In this episode, we'll give you an overview on how we created this 2.5D platformer with puzzle elements and some extra advice from a professional indie developer. We will separate the creation process by talking about the assets that we used as a base to start prototyping, how we took advantage of Unity's official visual scripting tool, and our collaboration with David Whaley, creator of the game The First Tree, to enhance the project's visuals. Let's get into it. When starting a new project in Unity, it's always nice to have a set of assets that you can use in order to prototype your main game mechanic. The asset store is a great place to look for props and characters, and for this particular project, we downloaded the 3D beginner resources to start building up our prototype. We also created the project using the high definition render pipeline. Since the 3D beginner assets have a cartoonish look to it, we wanted to try out and see how much of this pipeline would allow us to improve some lighting effects and create a more realistic look for the game. The main setup for this project is that the character has a rigid body for movement and interaction with other physical objects. But of course, in order to control a character, we needed to add some behavior to it. Normally, you would do this by creating a c -sharp script, but now Unity has an official visual scripting tool that's free for everyone, called Bolt. With Bolt, it is possible to create gameplay mechanics and interactive systems without writing a single line of code. Within our character main scripting graph, we update the character's rigid body velocity by getting the information of the keyboard horizontal axis input and multiplying it by a speed variable. We also use these parameters to set the current state of the character's animation. For the jump behavior, we use the button input node to add force to the rigid body in the Y axis. And to make sure the character only jumps when grounded, we use the sphere cast node as our condition for the jump to happen. We also wanted to add small triggers that would open doors to add a puzzle element to the game. For this, we created a new scripting graph and used the onCollisionStay node to detect when there were objects on top of it, activating a boolean called isPressed. Then for the door object itself, we created another graph and made a reference to the isPressed bool from the trigger object that would determine the interpolation value of the object's rotation. Now, in order to enhance the project's visuals, we figured it would be a great idea to have some advice from a professional indie developer. And for this, we've collaborated with David Whaley, creator of the game The First Tree. So there are three visual principles we can emphasize if we want to create striking graphics. Color theory, lighting contrast, and depth via parallaxing. For our first principle, since our character is a bright yellow, a pleasing color combo would be blue. That's due to it being on the opposite side of the color wheel, making it complementary. I adjusted the global fog and light settings to give the whole environment a blue atmospheric haze. Next, contrast or negative space can help the subject stand out in a crowded environment. We want people to easily see an outline of our character, so I made big windows to let light in and to outline our character as he runs past them. I didn't want the yellow to get lost in the shadows, so I added a white point light that follows our player. Cinematographers call this painting with light, and you should treat your game the same way. Finally, we can add the illusion of depth by creating parallaxing. I added chairs and candlesticks closest to the camera, and then a simple unity terrain with rolling hills in the background. A depth of field effect also draws the eye towards our character. Silhouetted houses on the hills complete the illusion that there's a wide, spooky world outside the window. As you can see, with a few adjustments in the HDRP workflow, we were able to give our prototype a completely different look and create a more engaging world to explore. I hope these tips helped, and if you're looking for more videos on striking game art, check out Game Dev Unlocked on YouTube. Prototyping this project was extremely fun given the visual way of quickly assembling our code with the use of Bolt. It was also great to collaborate with David Whaley, 
and we would like to encourage everyone to check out his game, The First Tree, and all of his work, which you can find links for in the description of this video. And that's all for today's video. This was just a quick overview of the tools we used to build this prototype. But if you're interested in diving deeper and learning more about the features used to build this demo, we have a link in the description for a longer training session on Unity Learn. Not only that, but you can also download the full project to play around with it. Thanks for watching.